السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بكم We give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has granted us a beautiful time here in beautiful Salima. Like everything comes to an end, our gathering here also comes to an end. All journeys will come to an end. Allah mentions in the Noble Quran that when they will be asked on Yawm Al-Qiyamah that how much of time did you spend in this dunya? Like a day or a portion of a day. Like a day or a portion of a day. We hear now three days, subhanAllah. It was as if yesterday we drove into this place. As if yesterday we were making salam to one another. As if yesterday we said to the brothers, you know what, the public toilet outside, etc., it's here, it's there, etc. Here's the timetable for the program. And it's all over, subhanAllah. Jayyid. And like that, our lives, we all came with an expiry date for our time in this dunya. What did we do with our time here? How did we spend our time? Did we maximize? You have a son. I mean, my one son, he's 10 years old. I mean, he's not yet 40 or 50, he's only 10. But I think to myself, where, where did the time go? How did he become 10? How did he become 10, Jay? I'm still counting my age as 27. I'm not 40. I'm still counting it as 27. Where, where did all of this time go? Like a split second, Allah time, Jay. And so our time here comes to an end. Bismillah ta'ala, it was fruitful. As we said, one of the main aims and objectives behind this program was that Imams network with one another. The Imam of Mulanje met the Imam of Karonga. The Imam of Blantyre met the Imam from Debza. They got to know one another. They build alaqat between themselves. And there's power that comes out of having these contacts and having these networks. Number one. Number two, the other aim and objective we stated is that while we are here, we learn about the strengths of one another. We hear about some idea. Somebody spoke about something. Somebody did something that I never tried before. MashaAllah. Most of us never knew that Sheikh Noor Fundi came from a non-Muslim background. Jayid. Most of us never knew that. Most of us never knew that Dr. Bamsi, MashaAllah, he was instrumental in putting up 10 masjids and 10 boholes. Alhamdulillah. Jayid. We never knew the struggles that Jannah went through to study. Car accident, 14 people pass away. And a Christian continues to pay for his transport for him to study in South Africa, etc., etc. We never knew that Dr. Yusuf, he left a good job in South Africa, living in a five-bedroom house. Come back here to Malawi, Salima, to run an institute, but because he was wondering about his parents, father and mother, what's their situation? And so he came back. We never knew all of this. And wallahi, experience now for the past seven years of the IDP, the bonds and the links and the relationships that were made during the retreat, those relationships last. Because that, that's when you got to know the person. That's when bi ta'ala you bonded. Jayid, very maf. It's very, very maf. Now we will remember. <coughs> Jayid, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept. Amen. Ya Mashaykh, if you leave here after having a nice time and after swimming and doing karate and running and all of these things here, but we return back home and we get into the rut of matters, back to the old way. If you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. To get what you never got, you need to do what you never did. Yes or no? 
Yes. Yes. Or, or you're studying the sihr of the whole mas'ala. <laughs> huh? If you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. To get what you never got, you need to do what you never did. One of the imams, he mentions that recently there was a bill which was passed. And now in the schools, the children are supposedly now, they, they need to study some Bible studies or something of the sort. Is that compulsory across all schools? Is that compulsory across all schools? Yes. Yeah. Yes. In primary. In primary school. Every child in a government primary school will be studying the Bible? Yes. So where have you people been? How deep you people have been in your sleep? Where is the association of uh, Malawi Muslims, etc.? Some of you know, but you know, the association of Malawi Muslims, they're very sleeping. So what are you doing about it? Who did you go to wake up? How many letters you wrote to them? How many signatures you took that you know what we imams of this area, etc. One, two, three, four, five, ten of us. We highly request our respectable ulama and scholars who are in the position of authority that you please, we are asking you, we are begging you to do one, two and three. Have you done that? No, you didn't do that. But then we will sit and we will complain. You are responsible for what's within your capacity. Did you do that? You, how easy for you to do that? And even online, even in the group, one of you could have written something and say, and the below signed ulama are also of this opinion, etc. And then each imam says, add my name, add my name, add my name, add my name. And you send it to the Association of Muslim Scholars of Malawi, etc. <laughs> okay, yeah, you know, we need to do something, Jay. Yes. You did that? No. You did that, Abdul Hakim? So then do another. Shall you? Send an audio message, do something. Make a, after you've done that quietly, and say now that you are making, you know, a public announcement, it has come to your attention that some people have said, you know, the ulama did nothing about this matter. We want you to bring it, we want to bring it to the attention of the public that no, we did. And we did petition and we did do this, etc., etc. Shall you? One of the imams, he said, <coughs> that he's thinking of maybe joining politics, you know, maybe can IDP assist him in campaigning, etc. We said that's outside of our realm. We don't get involved in those matches, etc. But nothing stops you. When we talked about the five great Muslims of Malawi, many of you who did that topic, you chose great famous politicians, Muslim politicians. They didn't come from nowhere. They didn't learn from the Sana. Shahid, they, they took the first step. They might not have had money, etc. If maybe you sit with them and learn their story. They said that, you know what, we had nothing. In fact, days I went without eating any food whatsoever. But I said, I need to do something. And so I made the first step. You take the first step, Allah will make the second step easy for you, Jayid. I mean, sometimes, maybe somebody is a sheikh, etc. And he gets into politics. Maybe via that politics, he's able to cause so much more change that he couldn't do while he was a sheikh, etc. Uh, we, we're not saying that, oh, now you must give up everything. No, you can still teach on the side and all of this, yeah? But sometimes what you can do in that arena is a million times more than what you can do there at your madrasa, etc., etc. And so if you feel you have the ability, etc., then do, bismillah, try it. There's no harm in trying. And if you fail, well, at least you tried. They say the graveyard... <coughs> is full of the people of regret. The people of regret. Oh, I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. I should have done that. Ten years I wanted to speak to my father. I never spoke to my father and then I died. I wanted to try this. I was sitting in my job for ten years, twenty years. I wasted the prime of my youth. But I wanted to travel. I wa but I didn't do it. Now I regret. Don't have regrets. Try it out. If it fail. <laughs> Rather better you try and fail than fail to try. Allah must So the worst thing would be that we gathered here and maybe we thought of some nice ideas, etc. I benefited from others. But then I returned back home and I went into my normal way and I continued my normal way, etc. What, what was the point? Try it. Something must change. Many of you came and you were saying, you know, in this area, 
there's no water. In that area, there's no masjids. In this place here, they need school, etc. You know that the IDP, we, that's not our primary focus. We're not into putting boreholes, we're not into building madrasa, we're not into building masjid, we, we're into building the imam. Yes, if sometimes opportunities come, and via those opportunities, we can enhance the position of the imam. So the people see, MashaAllah, this is the imam who arranged for the borehole for us. MashaAllah, this is the imam who arranged the hampers and he's the one who arranged the, uh, uh, what's this, the birthday, etc. Alhamdulillah, you know, khair and barakah. But that's not our primary focus. We're not going around looking for boreholes and looking for people who build masjid, etc. If it comes our way, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> one of the imams few days ago, he sends a message. He sent a picture of a student in his classroom. He said the student is very, very good. But the student needs glasses. The student doesn't have a pair of glasses. Maybe he saw, you know, in Ramadan, one imam, he wished for a pair of glasses for a student. And there, because we were running the campaign of wishes, Alhamdulillah, we sorted out those pair of glasses. But now, khalas, Ramadan is over. Wishes are over. You make your own wish come true now. And so he said, no, if you know, you can assist, uh, uh, you know, buy a glasses for this guy. I said, Sheikh, what did you do? What did you do? Now you are approaching us. Please buy glasses for my student. He's so good. He sent me the marks of the student. I don't, we've got no time to see all of that. If you said, you know what? I've been raising funds for the past two weeks for the student here. Look at the student's mark. Look at uh, how good the student is, etc. And I need 2,000 rand to buy the glasses. And I have already been raising now 1,000, 1 and a half thousand I raised. I'm short of 500 rands. You know, can you all assist? Even if it's not by an IDP, even if it's some other way, you know, we say, MashaAllah. You know, the Imam, he made an effort here. He's really tried, MashaAllah. Now he got stuck. You know, let us assist him now. You know, we will be willing to do that. But before you even tried, you come, you know, please, you know. Uh, you're like that miskin, like that one person. He's so miskin. And he's such a waste of time. He says, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, please, Oh Allah, you make Noor Fundi a millionaire. Oh Allah, you give Noor Fundi a million dollars. Oh Allah, you give Noor Fundi dollars and then give him the tawfiq to give me some. <laughs> you can't ask Allah yourself for the million dollars. Oh Allah, you give Noor Fundi and then you must give him the tawfiq that you know he must give me some, he must give me, you know, 20,000. I need 20,000. <laughs> I mean, you have absolutely no confidence in yourself. Shayyid, one of the Imams, mashallah, he said that the beautification and cleanup bonus that we ran in, I think, uh, February or March, is is one of the best benefits that he pulled out of that was confidence in himself. That he went to the mayor or he went to the municipality, he liaised with them, he liaised with different organizations, etc. You know, when like you you approaching them, like like you have a you have an aim, an objective, you have a maqsad. You know, I want to meet with these guys, etc. I want to meet with their head, I got a proposal, etc. Jayid? And it worked out, well, alhamdulillah. And so what did he gain? Besides all of the cleaning and maybe a hundred volunteers, but he gained confidence in himself. Jayid? Very, very important, subhanAllah. What did we say yesterday? Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, when they asked him to wish, this person wished for gold and silver and money and women and this and that and all of these things. They asked Umar, what did you wish for? What do you wish for? He says, I wish for a room full of people like Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah. I wish for a room full of people like this one and that one and this one and that one, etc. The human element, if it is gone, khalas, in Spain today, mashaAllah, if you go 800 years, Islam was there. One of the scholars, he wrote a massive, massive uh, uh, volume of uh, book of hadith, etc. I mean, they say that that was probably the largest book of hadith ever. Even more than the Musnad of Imam Ahmed. Musnad of Imam Ahmed is in 50 volumes. This one was even bigger, etc. And he said, others, they said, you know, we've planted Islam in Andalus. It is so strong here in Andalus, in Spain. The Islam is so strong. It will never be removed until Qiyamah. Today, well, what Islam is there? Yeah, maybe there's some Pakistanis who've moved there. You know, there's some uh, North African Arabs that maybe came now and stuff like that. They're working there, etc. But the palaces 
and uh, uh, the big uh, buildings and big masajid, etc. Where, where, where are they? Shahid, where are they? 800 years. Islam is not in Malawi for 800 years. It's not in South Africa for 800 years. And we feel proud. I mean, South Africa, we feel proud about the Islam in South Africa. And I'm sure the same with regards to you people. But it's not even 800 years. Maybe 200, maybe 300 years, etc. Right? Maybe 400. Half that period. But it's gone. Why? Because they were fighting with one another. Arguing over matters. There was a period during the Andalus uh, 800 years... It's called the reign and the rule of the petty kingdoms. It's called petty kingdoms. Because petty, but here it means like small kingdoms. But in reality, they did become petty. Petty. He's got one area of small half Salima. I am Amirul Mu'mineen of Salima. And then the other guy, he's in Mangochi. He is Amirul Mu'mineen of Mangochi. And then there's another family. They are in Dedza. They are the Amirul Mu'mineen of Dedza. Instead of one whole area under control of one authority, each one broke up, each town they are Amirul Mu'mineen. Five lines of the title. The title was five lines. How much does he control? He controls like two kilometers by three kilometers. You see a small island like that, you know, he's on a small island, he's Amirul Mu'mineen. And then he's fighting the other one. And then they're siding with the Christian against their own brother. Christian says, I'll help you against this one, then you take over that one. Yeah, no problem, let's make partnership. Excellent. Khalas. Fighting one another, and eventually khalas, they fell down. Divided and conquered they were. You people had this Qadri and Sukuti thing now for, for, for a long time, Jahid. You know, you know that Qadri, etc. After Jumu'ah, many of them, they make Salatul Zuhur and all of these things here. Now these things now, they, you know that they're not necessarily following this here from a fig point of view. This is a tradition they've been following now for 100 years. Now, most likely, many of them will continue until they die. If you're going to try to break your head now with that one Mas'ala from now until you die and until he dies, Many other matters that you can focus on, insha'Allah. Shaheed, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, Molesi, he said recently he started, you know, to interact with the, the Qadiris and all of this. He said, mashallah, you know, they welcomed him. They don't invite him for any of the zikri and all of these things, etc. And also, you people here, not like other countries where, you know, like there's a grave and the guys are going to the grave and they're worshipping the grave and they're asking the man in the grave and they're making such... You don't have that. Yes. All you have is, you know, they make a zikri and gri 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 and all of it. It's a small masail, inshallah. In comparison to the bigger matters. Jayid? I think it was Iqra Taiti also. He said in his area, you know, he started to interact and they called him. Uh, I think maybe they will have a lesson there at the masjid or this or that. And you know, so many people are just, just in jahal. Just in jahal. So go on, sit and speak and make some sort of difference. The Ummah is so fragmented. They can do whatever they want to do in Gaza and all of this here. Because the Ummah is so fragmented. They know nobody is going to do anything. Imagine on E-Day. On E-Day. They went into Aqsa and they did whatever they did. And they started to bomb Gaza, etc. On E-Day. I mean, a few years ago, they might not have done it on E-Day. You know, wait, wait two days after Eid. And then they'll do the bombing. But they're so brazen about it. They just, you know. As a, there's a story that one of them, one of the presidents of the past, he said, he said that, when the, this one fire took place at Aqsa and this one settler went and did something there and stuff like this, that uh, I didn't sleep that night. I thought all the Arabs are going to wake up and, you know, as somebody said, if all the Arabs stand up and they urinate, they'll probably flood Israel. If all of them just stood up and they started to urinate, they'll probably flood Israel. But they don't even have the tawfiq to even do that. And so that this president supposedly... He said that when that occurred there at Masjid al-Aqsa, I didn't sleep the whole night. Qalaq. I was afraid. I was nervous. The Arabs are going to get together. They're going to attack and all of this. When I saw the next day that nothing happened. They, you know, they just released one bayan that, you know, we, 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 this is not right and you mustn't do this and please don't do it again, etc. And you khalas. We can do what we want. You know, they did. The animal is dead. Uh, it's just, you know, that Sakratul Maut when it's shaking. That shake there, you know, what do you call this? Uh, you know, this, uh, when you slaughter the cow, you know, last movement there, etc. Kick the leg. Not kicking the leg because it's fine. Kicking the leg because, khalas, he's going to sleep now. 
time to die. Allah musta'in, Allah musta'in. Jayid, ala kulli hal. We never ever lose hope, ya mashayikh. Jayid, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there will always be a party of this ummah and they will be upon the haqq, etc., etc. And subhanallah, and that same hadith there, la yadurruhum man khada lahum. It will not harm them, those who have abandoned them, those who have forsaken them. And I mean, if you look at, for example, our brothers and sisters in Palestine and Gaza and all of these places, and our brothers and sisters in Syria, when the war started in Syria, what now, almost 10 years? Uh, it was Syria. Now, now, hey, you don't even want to know about it. It's like, you know, finished. Somebody sent a picture two days, three days ago, etc. Uh, Bashar Assad was there somewhere, and all these, you know, ulama, etc., scholars around him. For every zalim, you know, he does have scholars around him. When the Italians, when they invaded in uh, in Libya, they had muftis and all of them with them. Right? I, I don't think there's ever been any occupier, except that he had muftis and he had scholars, and they gave fatawa and, you know, don't fight against these people, and, you know, it's okay, and this and that, and all of these things here. Yeah. The reality of the day, Allahumma sta'an, right? We never ever lose hope, Yama Shaykh. Jahid, you have a beautiful country. You have a lot of work to do. We will never add an, uh, an Imam from Malawi onto the IDP in South Africa, except if in South Africa he's in a place where it's full of Malawians or foreigners. Like there's an Imam in Johannesburg, Imam Rajab, uh, uh, I forgot his son, Imam Allah, his son, Jahid. Uh, Rajab, uh, what's his son, Imam Rajab. Rajab in Johannesburg in uh, Hillbrow, etc. His masjid is 500 people, 600 people, full of foreigners, so it's fine. But other imams, no, you want to go to Malawi. Go be an imam in Malawi, go do something in Malawi. We'll, again, we'll drive again today, and I'm sure on the roadside we will see masjids that are empty. You've got so many Daru Ulums in the country, why is there even one masjid which is empty? And I've seen many, 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 many masjids empty. <coughs> Trees growing inside the masjid. Completely abandoned. Or it's other ones where the farmer, he's the one making Fajr, Zuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. He's a volunteer. He doesn't take any money. He's dead. Why? Because no imam. Imams, mashallah, they all want to be in the city. You know, they're used to the city life. Uh, they went to Darul Ulum and so they're eating nice. And so they're not ready to come and work here. You had Abdul Rahman as sumait He started Africa Muslim Agency in this country here. In this country, that's where he started. Jayid. I think today, Africa Muslim Agency, their wujud in Zimbabwe is more than even their wujud in this country here. Why? Right? Why? Have you petitioned? Have you asked? Have you said, hey, you know, you guys got like uh, 10, 20 du'at there in Zimbabwe. What about the country where he started his work? And if you do something, it will read there. Somebody might think something. Somebody might make some change, etc. But if you don't do, Allah stand. So you have a beautiful country and you have a lot of work to do. If I was a priest, pastor in Malawi, it would be in my interest to stir up conflict between Muslims and Christians. Because I want dollars, I want pounds, I want uh, the churches in Canada and Australia and uh, London, I want them to send me money. I need to get married my third wife, I need to buy a second Mercedes Benz. So I need money. So I will send them letters. Hey, you know what? The Muslims, they're going up. The Muslims, they got ISIS, Malawi ISIS now. Uh, they're making uh, the corruption. Uh, they burnt one church. They did this. Even if I send my friends, I'll burn one church. And I'll say, hey, the Muslims, they burnt the church. It's, you have to be wary of this matter. Right? Very easy for somebody to light, you know, throw a match there and cause a problem. Just for his own benefit. There's that story somebody sent yesterday, right? It says there were some white ants and black ants. They were in a bottle. And they were living happily, mashallah. They were getting married one another and living happily, mashallah. Until the person, he took the bottle and he shook it. When he shook it, the white ants thought that the black ants, the one who shook it, you know, caused the problems and caused all the earthquake, etc. And the black thinking the white and the white is thinking, and then they started to fight one another and kill one another. But they didn't ask who shook the jar, who shook the bottle. Each one is thinking that the next one did it. But meanwhile, you standing there, you are the one who shook it. They don't know. Like that, this one, he just lights the fire there. 
because I want, I want to build another 20 churches. If I can show conflict and issues and problems, I can get nice funding, beautiful funding. I've got a son, he's studying in London, I need my school fees for that. Uh, Allahu A'lam, you know, recently you had the whole hijab story and there was a masjid burnt and there was some church issue and all of these things here. Jahid, uh, that's why you need responsible people who are up there. Whether it's an interfaith thing where, you know, the, the big sheikhs of the country and the big uh, Muslims of the country and the major Christians of the country are sitting around one table and they both agree that, you know, we want to live and uh, coexist here without any conflict and all of this here. Do you to your way and me to my way, but there's no need for us to be killing one another, etc. Who's responsible? Not for somebody in South Africa or somebody in Lesotho. That's your responsibility, Ya Mashaikh. Jahid, some of you, you say, Mashallah. You know, in my village there, many ladies, they don't know how to read Quran. Many men, they don't. So what are you doing? What are you doing? Even via WhatsApp, you can teach them how to read Quran. All of them, they got WhatsApp, mashallah. What are you doing? We hope that after this retreat, and send, send us. Like how many of you, when you joined the IDP, we said, send me a message and tell us, you know, what extra you're going to do. What's special? You told us, mashallah, I teach and I do this. But what else are you going to do? What other ideas, etc.? When Ahmed Samson did that program and he went from one end of his area to the other end and visited every single masjid in between and met the imam and took a photograph of the masjid and interviewed the imam and gave the imam a small parcel, etc. We were willing to assist there because of the khair and barakah that comes out of it. And because the man was willing to do it, Three days he was willing to give his time and sweat and all of this here and do the work. And then his own idea that, you know what, after we did this, it was so good. We want to have a mini conference with all of the imams that we met, 50 something. We want to have a conference and we want three IDP imams to come there and address them and all of this here. Khalas, bismillah, you know, your, your effort, walhamdulillah. Nur Funni said, you know what, uh, we want the media to come here. I said, hey, you know, media and all of this, we don't, we're not interested in you putting IDP's name anywhere or anything like that. We want you, you, people must recognize Abdul Hakim Amido. They must recognize Imran. They must know you. You are the hand. You don't even, you're giving anything. You don't need to say, hey, you know, this one here, you know, IDP somewhere there, they're sitting in South Africa. They, they, they. No need. Alhamdulillah, some barakah came via your hand. You make the dua, oh, uh, Ahmed, Ilyas, Fatima, you make dua, and inshallah, more barakah will come. They must see that you are the hand which is giving, inshallah. Jaheed. Hayyakumullah, ya mashayikh. So we will wait and we will see how many of these messages come that, you know what, after this uh, retreat, you know, this is what I've decided. This is what I want to do. In the Malawi group, send that. Think about it today and tomorrow. Send it there. That me, Ahmed uh, Salim, uh, I've decided after this retreat, I'm going to do one, two, three things differently. Minimum, give us two things that you're going to do differently, inshallah. Jaid, every one of you in the group there, send us that. Let's see what ideas you come up with, etc., etc. Hayyakumullah, ya Mashaykh. There's some of you that I owe some money to. Please don't forget that I give you that money, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. Wallahi, we love you all for the sake of Allah. Jayyid. We might have been hard and harsh with some of you at times, Jayyid, but I think you deserved it. Jayyid, but I think you deserved it. And I think Abdul Rahman James will agree. <laughs> Where is he? Where is Abdul Rahman James? Yeah, I think I think you agree, isn't it? You agree, isn't it? You agree? Yes. Yes, very good. Alhamdulillah. Joy. <laughs> Some of you you might be came there. You say you you know you know in my area you know we needed this, and you saw I was not really interested. In what you, I was, I wasn't really interested. You say, you be like, you know, we, you know, we need this. I'm not interested. You came and you said, you know, we raised half of this here, and uh, we raised three quarter, and I got the permission for this, etc. Okay, let's see. Let's let's give you an ear, whether we can help or not. But let's listen to what you got to say. But as for I need and I wish and all of this here, as one brother he said, I, I wish to have twelve wives, but it's not going to happen. I mean, we wish. Tamanni, we can wish. Only Ramadan we had wish. <laughs> huh? After that, you need to catch fish. Hayakallah, ya mashaykh. So, ala kulli hal. We love you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We might have been a bit hard and harsh with some people, etc. But it's good. 
Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he led Salatul Fajr, and he was reading or Salatul Isha, he was reading Surah Al Baqarah. The one man he came he was making Salat there, and then, hey, this is Baqarah. I can't man. I got places to go. I got things to do. And so he cut his salah. He stopped following the imam. And he made his own salah on his own. And then he went away. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, when he heard about this, he went and caught the man. And he took him to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, this is a munafiq. This is a hypocrite. Allah, why you say he's a hypocrite? Because we were leading salah. And then he broke it off. And he made his own salah. And he's not following the imam. And he went and did his own thing and he went away. The man says, Ya Rasulullah, I mean, I've got things to do, I've got places to go. And the Imam here is reading so long here. I don't have the time for all of this here. Jahid is overdoing it. What did the Prophet ﷺ do? What did he say? Ya Mu'ad, Ya Mu'ad, Afatanun Ant, are you causing a fitna, O Mu'ad? Mu'ad is thinking, obviously, maybe Rasul is going to order, we whack this man, we whip him, we lash him, we throw him away. Well, what we must do with him? Big munafik, this. Afatanun ant, are you causing fitna, O Mu'ad? You causing fitna? If you are the Imam, take cognizance of the people behind you. There's the sick, there's the weak, there's the woman, there's the mother, there's the one who's got children, etc. Take care with regards to all of these people. You want to make salah on your own, tahajjud, read the whole night, whatever you want, etc. No problem. But you are the imam, you need to beware with regards to the people with you. You are the shepherd of the flock. Now take note. Look at how the Prophet sallallahu dealt with Mu'ad. Take note. Next one. Bedouin entered the masjid. You know the hadith. In the masjid, dars is happening here. Like this, somebody, he walks in here, he stands here, he opens his pants and he starts pissing. He starts urinating. We say urinating, you don't get the meaning of it. So when you say pissing, you know, you understand it better. Now you, you can see that. Number one, he opened his aura. Number two, he's urinating here in public. It's a masjid, not any masjid, masjid and nabawi. Well, the man is mental, what's wrong with him? Sahaba wanted to punch him, throw him out, maybe kill him, whatever. Prophet Wasallam said, leave him, leave him, leave him. He finished his job. And then he noticed they wanted to fight him, hit him. And so they, he came. Prophet Wasallam told him that, you know, this is a masjid. You don't do these things in a masjid. This is not the place for all of this. It's for the dhikr of Allah, Quran, etc. He said, Allahumma rahamni wa muhammada wa la tarham ma'ana ahada. <laughs> Oh Allah, have mercy on me and have mercy on Muhammad. And don't have mercy on anyone besides me and Muhammad. <laughs> Why? Because these people wanted to hit me, etc. Look at how the Prophet ﷺ is dealing with me. And look at how you people wanted to punch. Prophet ﷺ said, don't narrow that which Allah made vast. Allah's mercy is vast. Don't, don't leave them out. Point is, look at how the Prophet ﷺ dealt differently with Mu'ad and the man who urinated in the masjid. Oh, double standards. Double standards, uh, you, you're not just, you, you're showing injustice, you're not equal. No, very equal, this is justice. Might not be equal, but it's justice. How, why? Because Mu'ad was somebody who had knowledge. Mu'ad was somebody who knows better. He knows better. So the Prophet sallallahu dealt with him because he has knowledge. He is the leader of the ulama on Yawm al-Qiyamah, Mu'ad ibn Jabal. The leader of the ulama on Yawm al-Qiyamah. Mu'ad was the one who was sent to Yemen. Mu'ad passed away, I think he was, he was under 40. He was probably in his 30s when he passed away. He passed away very, very young. Leader of ulama on Yawm al-Qiyam. As for the other man, the Bedouin, he's a jahil. He's a jahil. So we need to show him extra mercy and rahmah, etc. And so, if we use the stick against you, it's because we know that you, you know better. You're a man of knowledge. So that's why we use the stick against you. Whereas the jahil, you know, we show more rahmah upon him, etc. Are you with us, Sayyidina Shaykh? Jayid? So using the stick against the alim is out of respect for him. Respecting the knowledge that you have because you're supposed to know better. Allahumma musta'an. Hayyakum Allah, Sayyidina Shaykh. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us in a gathering like this next year. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and keep us blessed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that next year maybe we have a bigger jama'ah. Bismillah ta'ala. Jayid?
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us khair and barakah in this world and in the hereafter. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to overlook our faults, our problems, our issues. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us ease. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our families, our friends, our colleagues, our relatives, those who are going through difficulties, ourselves. Each one of us, we know the difficulties that we have in our lives. We know the one who is sick and the one who has money problems and the one who has health problems and the one who has wealth problems. We know all of this here. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate matters. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant ease in matters. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where He is testing us, that He tests us. And he grants us sabr and the ability to pass those tests. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the numerous favors that he's favored upon us. That he grants us the ability to make shukr for those favors. وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Very few are the slaves of Allah who show thanks and give thanks to Allah. We ask Allah that the favors that he's favored upon us, we don't use those favors in his displeasure. We don't use our eyes to look at haram and we don't use our tongue to backbite and make namima and ghiba and all of these matters. And the rest of the favors of Allah, we use it in ways that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Rabbal Alameen, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram. Wallah, make it easy for us. Wallah, grant us khair and barakah in this world and in the hereafter. Wallah, whatever remains of our life, grant us khair and barakah and istiqama. Ya Muqallib Al-Qulub, thabit qulubana ala deenik. يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على طاعتك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك كيف هو رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم used to make dua that Allah you make my heart firm upon the deen he used to make this dua in his sajda and he was the Nabi of Allah what about the rest of us Allah مستعان Ya Allah, we claim that we are following in the path of the Anbiya. We claim to be following in the path of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Ibrahim and Isa alayhi salam and Dawood and Ayyub. Allah grant us the characteristics of those Anbiya. Allah grant us self-worth. Grant us confidence. Grant us Izzah. Grant us honor. Let us not have to belittle ourselves and, and, and disgrace ourselves before insan and before mankind. Allah grant us honor and Izzah via Islam. يا رحمن يا رحيم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا حي يا قيوم the Muslim Ummah, the Muslims in this country, the Muslims around the globe. Oh Allah, you know the difficulties that they are going through. How many don't have food? How many don't have shelter? How many have problems? How many are languishing in the jails? How many Muslim armies in reality all that they are doing is protecting the seats of their governments and their kings and their sultans but not standing up for Islam? Oh Allah, Either guide them or destroy them. Oh Allah, either guide them or remove them. Oh Allah, grant us leaders who we are proud to call our leaders. Oh Allah, grant us khair and barakah in this world and in the hereafter. Ease the affairs of the Muslims. Masjid al-Aqsa, Masjid al-Haram, the Haramain, protect the Haramain. Oh Allah, this pandemic which has engulfed the entire globe. Oh Allah, lift this pandemic from us. Oh Allah, those who have passed away, grant them the rank of the martyrs and the shuhada. O oh Allah, our parents, those who are alive, grant them long life, grant them khair. Let them be proud of us. Let them be proud of us. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin. O Allah, whatever efforts we've made, these broken efforts, our ikhlas was here, there, and everywhere. But oh Allah, you are kareem, and you accept. Whatever little we do, oh Allah, you accept. And grant us reward in abundance, according to your majesty. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-afafa wa al-ghina. Allahumma inna na'uzu bika min adab al-qabr wa na'uzu bika min adab jahannam wa na'uzu bika min fitna al-masih al-dajjal wa na'uzu bika min fitna al-mahya wa al-mamat Allahumma inna nas'aluka ilman ilman nafi'a wa rizqan wasi'a wa shifa'a min kulli da Allahumma aghfir lana wa rahamna wa tajawaz anna Allahumma aghfir lana wa rahamna Allahumma aghfir lana wa rahamna Allahumma aghfir lana wa rahamna Wallah, we say that we are from amongst the ulama and the du'at and the a'imma. Wallah, make us worthy of those titles. Wallah, make us worthy of those titles. You know the reality. You know our reality. You know the sins that we've committed in the darkness of the night and in the brightness of the day. You know every sin that we've committed. Wallah, forgive us. 
Wallah, the month of Ramadan, as you forgave us in the month of Ramadan, forgive us again. Wallah, as we depart and as we part in this gathering, Wallah, wipe away all our sins. Allah, we've only gathered here for your sake. The only bond between all of us here is the bond of Al-Islam. The bond of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. We come from different backgrounds and different uh, strands and different tastes and different likes. Wallah, the only bond is the bond of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Unite us in the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah with Firdaus. Wallah, accept our dua. Wallah, accept our dua. Wallah, accept our dua. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanahu أنا ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين حياك